Good morning and welcome to Middle Earth Readings. It is Monday the 10th of April. It is a bank holiday here in the UK. So for those of you who are on holiday, I hope you've had a nice long bank holiday weekend. For those of you who are celebrating, oh, there are many, many festivals at this time, aren't there? So, you know, Christian Easter is obviously very, very prevalent. It's a ancestral holiday in my family. So we did a little bit of Easter a little bit of a star even though it's a bit late for the the spring equinox but however you were celebrating and whether you were celebrating at the full moon or whether you were celebrating at this weekend I hope that you had a lovely time just taking a moment before we start to settle in and just ask yourself the question are all my needs met in this moment so that I can receive what I need for the coming week so do you need a glass of water? Have you got your pad and pen? If you want to take some notes, do you have your runes with you? Is it warm enough for you? The temperature has just plummeted a little bit. So I've just got myself a slightly warmer top so I'm not shivering at you as we go. Everything that you need in order to receive um, what we are going to be sharing today, working with the um, completion phase, with the waning moon we've had the full moon we're now moving into the the waning moon <clears throat> excuse me we've got a, quite a lot of planetary movements to get through today as well and two of them are quite deep planetary movements so Tyr's chariot mars and thor's chariot jupiter are both um moving into new runes this week so they're working at the at the subconscious level uh, which is why I'm asking you to really make sure that yes, I'm present, I'm here in my body. And then when you are ready, just taking a moment to welcome in the energy of the rune that you are working with. What rune are you working with? Take a moment to feel, where do I feel it in my body today? How is it presenting itself to me today? What colors is it offering to me? Which meanings are most present for me? Because we're moving into the energy of completions and completions isn't a buy. No, it's a what do I need to do in order to complete this moment? I remember I've been doing um, a lot of one-to-ones last week. I'm doing a huge number of one-to-ones over the um, over these few weeks. It's always a busy period for me working privately with people and talking culturally about the way in which um, in the UK we take like so long to say goodbye to each other. Yeah, and that can be really, really irritating, but it is also part of a ritual. It's this ritual of completion. So we're asking that question, how do I fulsomely, wholly prepare to uh, to complete and say farewell to your rune if you're working with it through the lunar cycle, but also to harness the energy of the of this waning moon through the course of the coming week as we move in towards the new moon. So I can see lots of people saying hello, which is always nice. I never know on a bank holiday whether there's going to be lots of people or few people. So we've got Chen and Chen, you've got Ingus this week. Really lovely. Hmm. There's something about, with Ingus, there's a little bit of a closing in energy there, a sort of, what do I need to do to close in and to move back into, not necessarily my shell in a bad way, just in a protecting your energy way is the way I feel like there. And Suzanne says, hello everyone, love and blessings. They found the full moon and it is fabulous. It was just such a wonderful full moon, wasn't it? I'm just um, lying in my bed and looking at the moon. And every time I got up to be like, I must go and do something, I was like, I just can't just have to keep looking at the moon. I love Gibo full moons as well. I really, really love them. This energy of gifting, of giving and receiving, of balance. Such important balancing, powerful energy there. Marie, you have got Perthro for the week. It's really lovely. Ebbing, flowing, surrendering. What still needs to be surrendered? What gratitudes could be given for that with your Perthro rune? Erica, it says Munyo, you have Isa for the week and Bacano for the month. A really interesting combination there of Isa and Bacano of the spring energy, the sort of new shoots and the budding and the cold energy of winter. It was reminding me one of the things that I've been thinking about been meditating on completion is the way in which when we um, commit to something, we fully commit 
Oh, and so the 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 new shoots, the, the little shoots, they have their moment where they just go, I've got to commit to this. And sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes the winter creeps back in and, and the frost gets them, which is why we have you know, cycles of, of blooming. You know, and there will be some uh, bulbs that haven't yet put their heads above the parapet. But, but nature fully commits, doesn't it? it you, it's, they're either there, they're saying, yes, I'm growing, or, or they're not. And, and sometimes that doesn't work out. But there's still, that's a sort of the natural way to fully commit and to say, yes, I'm putting all of my energy into this. Not I'm putting a little bit of my energy into this and I might grow or I might not. Not the way that, um, that nature works. And Suzanne is working with Tewaz, lovely masculine energy there, feeling into the tears, chariot energy there. Mm. Lovely action moving forward there. Morning, Michelle. Shannon has a Thala for the week and Thurisaz for the moon cycle. So we're working with a Thala and Thurisaz today, Michelle. So listen out for them. They're two of our spotlight runes, let's call them. Michelle says, Ingu's for me too. Wonderful. Can you clarify the meaning of closing energy, Chen? I think it's, for me, it is... Well, it would be in, in, in all of its different meanings, really, to explore. That's what the runes are there for. They are there to be um, to act as spirit guides for us to say, well, how can I close off my energy? Is this about, in, in the context of completion, you might be looking at what loose ends can you tie off, what things on your to-do list can you complete? But you might also be looking at, at the end of the day, what are my um, closing down rituals? What do I do to signify to myself that I'm moving into sleep? would be a really powerful one for this um, for this Ingu's energy. And that might be energetically in terms of closing down the chakras or the energy centers. It might be in terms of saying, you know, <clears throat> the eternal route that my husband and I have about, I believe that we should always be in pajamas or something that signifies it is bedtime you know, when we go to bed. Um, to let our bodies know is that ritual of sleep. So all of these different ways in which you can say, yes, I'm, I'm closing and completing. So that it's more powerful, the replenishment that you get through the night, for example, if you're thinking about that in terms of night. So that would be a practical way of working with it. Lisa, you say that you have Kinas for the month and Iwas today. We are working with Iwas today as well. Fire energy there with um, Kinas being the torch in the bright flame. It's often associated with the pine wood, which is a very um, bright burning wood, whereas Iwas is associated with yew wood and it's a long burning wood. It's often said to be fire's keeper. So again, a complementary energy there, similar to the Issa and Bacana, is maybe looking at those and how do they work together. And Michelle says, I have Bacana for spring, moving into Thurisaz, and we are working with Thurisaz today as well. And again, everyone who's sharing rune combinations, you're getting some really interesting rune combinations with um, Bacano and Thurisaz can sometimes be seen as, um, what they are also masculine and feminine, the balance of masculine and feminine, um, of aggression, and protection or vulnerability and of the hidden and the very obvious all of these things come together and when we balance those incredibly powerful partnerships but they take some work to do that as well um shannon says you are thala for the week and thurisaz for them i've already said that sharon haven't because we get shannon we're going to be working with those aren't we so i will come back to them so today i've asked you what really going to be working with i want to share with you three little stories to help us with the theme that has come through for us to work with through, it's coming very strongly through from Tears Chariot and Feyu. So Tears Chariot moves into Feyu today. It's rune of Tear moving into uh, the zone, the place of the Fenris wolf uh, and the story of him and the Fenris wolf, which I might tell, but it's not the story that actually came through. There is, let's say, three illustrative stories that Tear wanted us to dive into. So first of all, he reminds me that in the context of um, Feyu being the rune of, um, of wealth, of abundance, of life force, it's also known as Freya's rune. Um, I should find it in my pack so that I can bring it up for you. He reminds that it's the rune of greed as well. It's that sort of thirst for life, that desire that comes through. And the way in which we manage that that force of greed and Odin has two his two wolves you know that often you'll see the the pictures of Odin enthroned and he's got two wolves at his side and they are called um Geri and Freki and both of their names here's the fairy here's the fairy here both of their names mean greed 
Now, the Feyu rune poem speaks of um, the wolf in the, sp the forest, this desiring energy of that which has been outcast, of that which does not have access to the abundance. These are um, the wolf in the forest is not just like the Fenris wolf or the wolves who chase the sun and the moon. Um, lots and lots of these um, energies of the wolf as something that desires the light, desires to devour the light, desires to devour life. But they are also symbolic of those who've been cast out of society for crimes, for unforgivable crimes. And um, they would be sent out into the forest and this became the danger. They became a dangerous force of that which was no longer bound by the rules of society. So, you know, murder, theft, all of those rules, those things were no longer binding those people and they were in terrible need because they didn't have access to resources. And so they become dangerous. And so the wolf becomes, um, becomes that as well. So you might ask yourself, well, if that's the case, why does Odin have two wolves called Geri and Freki? So we're going to come back to that and explore that a little bit. Tia also brought in the energy of the story of um, Freya, who is terribly desired by the Jotun, by the giants, the people of the giants. And there are stories of, you know, there was, Thor's hammer is stolen and in return they want Freya. And there is this possessiveness. Worth bearing in mind that although Freya is a, a captive in one sense, she is a part of a hostage exchange. It isn't a hostage exchange, she's not kept in chains. This is a peacemaking hostage exchange. So the Aesir give some of their most precious peoples to the Vanir, from whom Freya and Frey and Njord come. And Freya and Frey and Njord come and they do this exchange and they settle. This is more like a, you might think about it like a, a marriage bond in that sense. A binding together of peoples is, is, is the sense here. And so she's not um, imprisoned, she remains free. And her um, partner, who is known as Odd, is um, significantly absent, you know? We know him only in his absence. Some people think that he's Odin, some people are not sure. But, but he's, she is a free woman. She can go where she wants, she can do what she wants. She is free to embody the lover, the warrioress, the sovereign energy, the sorceress energy. You know, she pursues her own interests. She does what she wants. So she is freedom incarnate and the Feyu force must flow. And this is a really important part of our, th a part of our theme. The Feyu force must flow and then life force and abundance will, will come through. And so this is why I'm exploring with you today the theme of um, growth and greed is what we're looking at. And the final story that um, Tia wanted us to perhaps a little have a little of a play with. So as I'm telling you these stories, just think, well, you know, which one is resonating for me? Which one is um, speaking to me at this point? Is the story of um, Fafnir. So Fafnir was a young dwarf prince. For those of you who are do Awaken program, you'll know that I, I use this as one of the stories for, one of the illustrative stories for the Feyu ruins. So we're just doing a very small um, pressy here. So he was a dwarf prince, his father was a king, his father managed to get hold of some gold. It was cursed gold, let's be honest about it. And Fafnir is consumed with desire, consumed by desire for this gold. He eventually goes on to slay his father and then he can, he can hoard it, he can hoard it to himself, he can hold it. Remember what I said about um, Freya being free and that life force needing to be free? And eventually he transforms into a dragon. And this, this, this hoarding dragon, and we all know from things like the Lord of the Rings, the energy of Smaug. And I've done a lot of work with dragon uh, before, with dragon energies. So we have dragon energies where we tend to the Feyu life force, and the dragon energy is free and um, represents the life force circling eternally around and around. And then we have the hoarding dragon who has been possessed by this power, and I must have, I must possess. And, and that's not a good thing. Let's say eventually Fafnir is slain, but the cursed gold, this is the problem in the first place. It has been, it has been cursed. It hasn't been given freely. It hasn't been given without caveats. So this energy of completion that we are feeling into is all about saying, what do I need in order to complete? What do I need in order for perhaps the desires that are um, raising in me that are coming through with Gary and Frecky? What is it that I need to do to complete them? Which is why I asked you at the beginning, you know, what is it that you need? Do you need a glass of water? Do you need something warm? 
said many, many times in talking about the North is Rune and on the uh, Dream Wheel quests that um, we do with the Illuminate retreat, we look at needs, absolute importance of having our needs met so that in those moments when we're presented with a pot of cursed gold, our instinct can kick in and say, that's not what I need. I might desire it, but it's not what I need in that moment. So we're going to be thinking about completions. And what does it mean to complete? What does it mean to complete satisfactorily, well, you know, to finish an energy? And I was the final thing that, um, it was actually Freya who offered this to me and she said, think about completions less as uh, writing an essay where you have a middle, of, um, a beginning, a middle and an end. Now, this is the way that we're taught. This is the story world where everything begins. There's a middle, there's a satisfactory ending, and then it's done. You should think about it more as a heartbeat. Every heartbeat is a completion. Every heartbeat satisfactorily comes to its completion and one pulse is created. One generation of force is created. And then the next heartbeat comes and so in order for the next heartbeat to come the first heartbeat needs to have completed itself successfully so it becomes a cycle a cycle of completions that need to unfold within each other almost like a flower opening you can't open the middle bits of the flower until the outer edges have fully completed you no know, their openings so we're thinking about completion in that way so I've mentioned that we have Tears Chariot moving into Feyu, and that's happening today. And on the 13th, in three days' time, we have Suna's Chariot, the sun, is moving into Manaz. So it is moving into the rune, um, the rune of sovereignty, the rune of personal power, the rune of the divine human. Um, it is also a rune of accountability, it's a rune of responsibility. And this is where, for me, where... Um, Odin having Geri and Freki beside him is so important. Odin has so he has so many complex symbols around him. He has his eye that he sacrifices, he has his spear, and this is the case with so many of the um, northern deities. They have very, very complex and rich um sets of accoutrements, you know, the falcon cloak the nets of Loki, all of these different things. And they are in some way, I think, a, you might think of them as being like an externalization of parts of their power or aspects of themselves that have become externalized so that they can take full responsibility for them. Odin doesn't sit on his throne pretending that he doesn't feel that thirst for life, that greed for knowledge, that desire to continue to exist to defer Ragnarok, the final battle, so that he can complete, you know, whatever mission is that he has. But what he does is he takes responsibility for that. And the Northern Soul Complex is so beautiful in that it allows us to see ourselves as woven beings made up of parts, some which are very close to us, some which are further out. And when we are able to do that act of really um, communing, with these parts of ourselves we're able to take responsibility for them we're able to offer them love we're able to say what what is this greed you know gary and frecky they're like they're slavering at this what is it what is it what is it you know and odin says oh and he notices whereas for us particularly with these energies where i've talked about um tears chariot and thor's chariot these subconscious energies of you know, the warrior the sacrificer um the one who is always moving forward towards the mission and of Thor's chariot, the sovereign, the the builder, the creator. These are energies that are we often feel at the subconscious level unless we work to bring them up. So when we work with our runes, we're working with them as spirit guides to help them to help us to encounter parts of ourselves. And what is my sovereign self saying at this point what is my warrior self saying at this point so Gary and Freki become um, parts of Odin that he is proud of and that function well that the, the greed stops being something which is the hidden wolf in the woods the unknown the bit that's frightening the bit that we don't know what's happening and he says no nope, I'm going to walk with that right by my side I'm going to walk with the fear 
I'm going to walk with the passion right there by my side at all times. So he's really bringing that through very strongly. And soon as chariot in manas really draws us out to do that, to stay stand in your power and embrace all of those parts of you, the darkness and the light, for they all have wisdom to offer you. And then on the 16th, that deepens even further because Thor's chariot also moves into manas. So we have the sun and Jupiter in manas resonating with this strong energy of sovereignty this strong energy of taking responsibility of being accountable and this is often the first steps are to be accountable to ourselves this is a great time for doing um inner work to balance out what you want to do externally um, Odin is hanging out in Lagos. He's down there at the bottom of the tree. So he keeps the doorways open for um, deep self knowledge. And the sun and Thor are up in the in the high echelon saying, and how do you then bring that out into the world? How is this then going to change your behavior, change your actions? I've been doing quite a lot of work on a lot of it in a work, in a child work and in a teenager work simply around that question of what do you need you know what do you need thinking about them as my gary and frecky my you know we're thirsty we're hungry um I, we're full of desire we're full of this we're full of that and me saying okay i've got time for you i've got time for you what is it that you need what is it that you want and when we're able to do that for ourselves then we can show up more powerfully in the world around us when we are listening to ourselves fierce soul care it's part of that sense in which completions are never ever fully done this is why we have cycles of the moons and the cycle of the sun and the cycle of the day we have continuous moments of the possibility of completion when in a particular moment a memory comes flooding back into the mind a memory comes up and it says oh and we say, okay, I'm paying attention. What is it that you need? And we, and something clicks, something that perhaps didn't click or that we didn't take time to listen to in the moment all those years ago. We now have the, uh, the maturity or the emotional intelligence or the self-compassion to, to manage these moments and to step more fully into our power and to claim that power that we left behind with us. So although the sovereignty piece can feel like it's very external and looking outwards, very strong bond between the inner world and the outer world is what's being promoted. Have I found for you the Manas room? I'm not sure that I have. I'll keep looking for it. And then our final planetary movement, which is on the 17th, so at the end of the week, we have Frigg's chariot is moving into a Thala. So this is um, Venus, and Frigg is moving into a Thala, and she's saying, however unready you feel, you are already part of the great chain of elders. Now, you're already leaving a legacy. You're already doing your bit and all that can be asked for is like in the moment in the moment do your best and it's going to be enough no you are descended from a long line of survivors no You're, you are enough just see yourself in that chain nothing else required at this point just see yourself in that chain you know whether or not you go on to have biological children there are so many other ways in which legacy can be offered and this is one of the things that took me full circle in thinking about this idea of completion and what Tia and Freya who come forward very strongly and then Frigg bringing in her thoughts and Thor and Suna said when you think about um, greed there are some people in the world who seem to draw in lots and lots of resources but we can't just assume that all of those people are are greedy people perhaps some of them are you know but it depends on the size and scale of what it is that they want to grow in the world and that's not saying that 
Now, a, an oak tree is any more valuable or powerful than, uh, than the moss or the lichen. Now, all biological, biological is that the word I'm looking for? All plant life, we're using the metaphor of plant life, has its part, has its contribution to play. But some plants consume more energy because what they are then producing is bigger. Now, others need a small amount of a very concentrated, very specific energy in order to bloom and to bear their fruits. And it, Odin came and he was talking about Gary and Freki and he was saying, I am this greedy for life because the vision I have for the world is so immense. I need that much energy. So the question that all of the deities, all of the um, spirit guides, you might call them, are asking of us at this point is to say, you know, what is, what are you creating? What are you growing from these desires? And if you are growing something big, you know, if your vision is big, you are deserving of the energy of the earth. You know, she will be there to support you, that abundant energy. Whereas if you're sort of slavering and wanting to hold the stuff to you and keep it, you know, to keep it, to keep it, um, it's going to be mine, it's going to be mine. That's a different force. That's a different type of, that's the shadow of the Feyu rune, it's the shadow of many of the runes, in fact, is this, this holding. So when we become part of something where we say, yes, I am an elder, yes, I am a creator, yes, I am a sovereign, and I am drawing in what I need so that I can bear fruit and bring it out into the world, then feel the greed, because that is your vision, your purpose, your mission, asking you to nourish it, asking you to feed it. Ah, so let's see. <clears throat> Suzanne says, I have Feyu in Tears Chariot. You do indeed, so it's a return for you, a very powerful time. So anytime there are planetary energies are coming and you know what your birth runes are, you can harness these energies. Often they offer a, a, a depth of wisdom, a depth of understanding. It's not always like a walk in a park, woohoo, you know, hey. It's a, a deepening of your connection with, with your room and with the energies that it offers. Um, Chen is saying, reminds me of bridging, like the half of the bridge that ends and needs to tie into the new beginning. Yes, exactly. You could think about that in terms of completion being a bridge from one place into the next that I what do I need in order to transition from one um energy that I'm embodying into another um Christy so you've got Suello and we are looking at Suello today which is lovely and Erica says what a beautiful transmission of the breath for completion yes it's just this is we said the heartbeat it's the breath and sometimes it's very difficult, you know, when you start to meditate on the breath, you realise that it is a cycle, it is a flow. When is the end of one breath and the beginning of another? Such a tiny, tiny moment. But there is a lot that has to happen in order for that change of state to occur. When we breathe fully out, we make a lot more room in our lungs. And so we breathe more fully in. Which is why if you're feeling like oh, I'm breathing very shallowly, I'm not feeling really great, it's good to breathe out more fully because it encourages your lungs to expand more and to breathe in more fully. So when we complete powerfully, we then begin more powerfully as well. Now, let's have a look at our rune. So I've talked about the Feyu rune already. So this was one of our feature runes, the Feyu rune. We've looked at it in three different forms. We've looked at the stories of Gary and Freki. We've talked about the Jotun and Freya this desire for her power. Now, I should just, as, as a caveat, say that obviously this is a story told by the Aesir, by the gods, about the Jotun wanting to um, kidnap Freya. And so their perspective is that, uh, you know, the Jotun were going to be all greedy and they just wanted to keep her power. We don't know that for sure, but certainly Freya didn't want to go. And I think that's a good enough reason for um, the gods to resist that. Um, so for your Feyu energy, you're going to be looking at that flow. You're going to be looking at that um, very much the idea of completion in the sense of the blood pumping, the heart beating, the breath. What do I need to do in order to breathe out more fully so that I can breathe in more fully? 
we've talked about some of these more practical things that we can do around releasing, around what does it mean to complete the day well? What does it mean to begin the day well, to complete our, my sleep cycle and to allow myself to wake? Um, do I keep a dream diary so that I'm actually uh, keeping the... I'm, I'm gathering in the wisdom from, from my dreams. You might think about that. What does it mean to complete my working day? and then move more fully into replenishment and play and, and joy. It's these sorts of things. So we're acting more intentionally, which brings us into that sovereignty piece as well. So let's look at the Manaz rune with sovereignty. Why is it that every time I want to look at the Manaz rune, it, it disappears on me? I'm sure I showed you the Manaz rune. Am I being called to claim my own sovereignty more powerfully, people? This is always a possibility. Where are you, Manaz? So I've talked about Odin on the throne. I think one of the things, again, that I love with the Northern tradition, here it is, here's the Manaz rune. It's actually one of the runes I'm working with at the moment. I had it in my reading last week. The Manaz rune here. We have um, Odin on his throne on This is his throne looking out over the worlds. But we're reminded that he shares his throne with Frigg. He isn't like um, Zeus, who, you know, all powerful Zeus, he has his consort, and but Hera has her own realm. Frigg and Odin share the throne. Manaz represents the synthesis of, um, you know, we've had so many runes here with the synthesis of opposite forces coming together. How do we work with them? How do we weave between them? How do we dance between them? Coming up, Michelle says, I'm vibing the dance of masculine and feminine energies. And the Manaz rune encourages, encourages us with that it says perhaps i've completed perhaps with one part of myself i've completed but have i done that with every part of myself is every part of me on board with this if you've never done it before one of the exercises i really like to have um like to do is i imagine i'm sitting at um, my own personal board table Obviously, for me, it's a big stone table with, uh, you know, sort of flaming torches and we're all robes and, you know, that sort of thing. It's not a boardroom with shiny doors and an intercom. An intercom, that's an old thing, isn't it? But, I, beside the point, I invite in the different parts of myself to make sure that they are all on board with what is happening, with what needs to happen. Uh, I do that in my business decisions, I do that in my personal decisions. It's making sure that you're, you know, so Odin would be, you know, I'm going to do this. Then he looks at his wolves. Or what do they think? He consults Huggin and Munnin. What do they think? He checks in with his eye that is under the well. What's going on there? He asks his consort, um, Frigg. He speaks to Saga, who is sometimes thought of being another aspect of, of Frigg. He is a sovereign par excellence in that he knows that he doesn't know everything. So he seeks guidance inwards and outwards when he makes his decision. So Manaz is asking you to do that. How can you complete by getting the information that you don't have from sources internally and externally is what the Manaz rune is offering you. We are talking a little bit about the Athala rune, but that's coming forwards again to have a little bit of a chat with us. Here we go. So you'll remember that Frigg's chariot is moving into Athala. It's his legacy. And this rune brings back, it's later in the Futhark. It's, it's also in the final eight, the final family of runes alongside Manas. But it does, it weaves in so many of the energies of the runes. You can see the Gibo rune in there. You can see the Kines hat on top. We've got the Ingu's rune. We've seen so many energies of the of the runes. It is a coming together. It's a rune of inheritance and legacy and ancestry. When we think about completions here, this can be about it can be about things like you know. I I sat down and thought to myself, well, how do I want to celebrate this weekend? What celebrations do I want to bring in? What do I want to do that is um, more like Norse or Anglo-Saxon? What do I want to do that is more honouring my ancestors? You know, both sides of my family come from Christian background, so we did a little bit of storytelling around that as well. You know, what is it that I need to do in order to be with my tribal elders through this time? Ask for their advice and guidance as I come towards completions. I'm open to and complete this um 
celebration you know, which for me obviously starts at the, at the spring equinox and then we had the full moon as well and then we're coming to the end of this cycle so it feels like a big like an arc that I want to complete at this point and Athala says what did your ancestors do uh, what does your land call you towards what's what's right for you at this time I revisited the um all of the plants that I grew while I was pregnant with both of my sons I have a number of plants that I did I did a lot of gardening when I was pregnant with my children because I had really awful morning sickness but the only thing I could do was lie on the ground with my little trowel and plant stuff so there's a lot there so I, I revisited those and I did a lot of um weeding and putting new stuff in around those plants so that they look their their best I did a lot of that over the weekend so it's honouring not just your um, your tribe, but also your land, and looking for that completion energy, that fullness energy with your with your Athala rune. Um, it can be nice to you know, like wear a little bit of of jewellery or something that is from if you have anything that has been passed down from your ancestors. You have anything that evokes particular memories. Paying attention to the power that you are drawing, to the memories that you're drawing on when you choose what you wear, what you have in your environment around you. All of these things are very athala. Ooh, who wants to play next? We've got the Thurisaz rune here. The keeping of the boundaries with the Thurisaz rune. The complete... There is a slightly more assertive, you know, anything that where you need to say no. No, I need to complete by saying no, I'm not going to do that. I need to stop holding that part of my diary open. I need to stop bending over backwards for this person. You know, the Thurisaz energy is calling you into that. It's saying create those boundaries and celebrate them. This is about... Um, drawing your power back in you know where you might have left doorways open it's saying go and close those doors you know, close them off complete them finish them they will become drains on your energy if you don't do that and it's very much calling you to again if you think about um odin with gary and Freki and this idea of um externalizing and what's the word i'm looking for bringing compassion and curiosity to different parts of the self when we're able to say you know i sit at my soul boardroom we talk to each other and one of my soul parts says um no i don't like that that's not making me feel good then my sovereign self needs to say okay what am i going to do about it because if i do nothing about it the thurisaz energy builds up inside my energy system and at some point it will burst out it will burst out by me snapping at somebody, getting upset, um, having a, you know, one of those days when you just cry horribly, um, maybe getting ill. You know, it will manifest in some way. The, our role is to listen to all of those parts of ourselves and then say, what action can I take? And when we take that in a way that is assertive, you know, I'm going to close that boundary off. I'm going to have that difficult conversation. I'm going to step into my power in that way. Then the Thurisaz energy expresses itself positively. When we don't do that, we can become aggressive. We might not mean to do it, but we can become aggressive in that sense. So it's very much about saying, yes, how do I stand in my power? How do I listen to what I need and then take action that is um, assertive to end what needs to be completed to powerfully finish and complete. Then we've got the eyewares rune, which is also a it's also a defence rune. It's it's a, because it's like the staff. It's the yew tree. It's the staff. Um, it's the axis mundi. That's what I was looking for. The axis mundi around which everything else revolves. It's often seen as being like the eternal self the yew tree that survives and keeps on going. There is a stillness here. So whereas with the Thurisaz rune, the Thurisaz rune might invite you into action, the Iwas rune invites more of a sense of standing your ground, not necessarily sort of going out and saying, like, what action am I going to take to do this, but just very quietly, steadfastly, standing my ground. I'm not going to change my mind. No, I'm going to carry on doing this. It also offers to us the sense of leaning into support there as well, of saying, who, is, who are my allies? Who supports me in this? Who has my back? Literally, you know, you could think about it as a staff. And honestly, as I'm speaking to you, my staff are just winking at me from the corner, just saying, hello. Um, 
this sense in which we create environments that support us in our self-expression, that the work that I put into my staff who's over there, you know, carving the runes into her, um, painting her eyes, getting the crystals to be put, put into her, create our partnership which I can rely on and I can lean into. The more energy that we put in, the more comes out. Um, Lisa, I think, was it Lisa? I want to say that it was Lisa who was talking about Iwas and Kinas. Um, apologies if it wasn't Lisa or if it is Lisa and I'm, I'm, my memory's been poor. I know you were earlier on in the comments. There is a sense in which we are investing in the long term in things that we might not know what something is for yet but if we instinctively feel like this is important you simply say i am investing in my future self that there is a there's a completion there's a release of um you know like a project if you want to finish it even if you don't know fully what it's for you know sort of sit there worrying about it i'm gonna worry you know what's it for what's it for what's it for it's letting it go and then saying it might actually return to you in a more powerful form than you had realised. Or its its meaning, its purpose might become evident to you at a later state. Whereas if you sort of keep staring at it and going, oh, no, no, no. or thinking, oh, I'm not, I'm not going to complete this until I know what it's for. You know, the, the what's the, the, the phrase that they say, if X, then Y. One of the greatest powerful bindings that we place upon ourselves you know when i lose weight then i will buy myself a nice dress is the, the one that comes up or something like that so like, well why don't you deserve a nice dress anyway you know it's those sorts of things it's the so this um says let go of anything that's the when this then that and just say now if i'm what can i do to complete now what can I do to complete now and to recognise that I may then receive other things at a later point that I didn't even expect? You know, that's you know my my staff winking at me right now is basically saying, yeah, you just I just picked up a piece of birch wood from my local train station from the platform. I stepped out of the train and it was lying there in front of me on the ground. I was like, well, that's mine. Took it, did the stuff no idea and she's been with me for years and years and years and she has had my back so many times so that's the 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 the, the creative energy the fire energy let that come through and then trust the eyewares rune that it's going to support you what are the things that, su that support you what are the things that you want to have present um in your life with the eyewares rune that um will support you in the long term and then finally our final rune of this cycle um, of this lunar cycle is the Suelo rune. So the Suelo rune, the rune of the sun, uh, the sun wheel as it turns, moving, it's playful, there is a dancing energy to it. So whereas with the Iwas rune, we're very much about rooting and cr creating like physical objects and saying this is my support structure this is what i've created this is who i am the suelo rune says but i could be this or i could do that or i could try this or i could try that it says come and explore your edges come and sail on a ship onto unknown waters for your old journey has completed and a new one wishes to beckon you on it's almost that sense to me, if you imagine, um, I'm just sort of seeing in my mind's eye somebody who's been on a long voyage. They've been on a long voyage and they come to their hometown and in my vision they have, there's a, there's a river you know, at their hometown and they just say, I'm just going to go out on the, on the boat to explore that part of the bank and that part of the river that I remember as a child and I haven't been there for a long time. They get into the boat and there's nothing to do, there's no agenda, there's no purpose, there's no, no nothing like that and you're just in the boat and you just feel this sense of, yeah, the, the old, the, the journey of that person that you were, that journey that you've been on has, has passed, it's gone, you know? And the new vistas of what might be possible are just whispering at you on the horizon but in that moment you discover something in yourself that you didn't have room to discover before because you were on the journey you were pointing in this direction and doing that thing it's that moment where you say 
there is nothing for me to do right now, nothing for me to do right now. And a little voice whispers inside and says, well, perhaps this is the right time for me to pop up then. Now, that's what this Sorello reel, I think, is calling you into. It's to make space to be in the liminal, in the in-between space that we need between one adventure and the next, between one heartbeat and the next, between one breath and the next. That moment when you feel the peak of the in-breath at the top of the lungs, and then there's that little pause, and the out-breath comes once more, it's like the wheel turning, and when you get to the top, no, there's that moment of balance, and then it starts moving down the other side again, and there's so much wisdom and so much power to be claimed in that moment. So the Suwello is saying, claim that moment, be in that moment, be in that place where there's nothing, you're not Odin on his throne with his two wolves and they're like giving really important advice in the moment about, you know, this person standing in front and they're asking me to do this thing and Gary and Frecky, they're like, yes, 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 yes. No, it's not that, it's Odin like in his back garden. This doesn't sound disrespectful. With his sleeves rolled up, doing a bit of weeding and they're like lying on the ground, you know. Um, and perhaps like play fighting a little bit. And then that, their ears prick up suddenly for a moment. And they're like, oh, what's that? No, it's that. It's like learning each other and having fun with each other is what the Suwella rune is offering. So those are our runes for the um, coming week. We are at the end of our waning moon cycle. Next week, we'll be starting uh, again with our new moon cycle. So for those of you who are following me with the lunar runes, we'll be selecting new runes to work with. Obviously, you can bring whatever rune you're working with at the moment in time. We have our Seership with the Runes workshop coming up, which I am very excited about. So if you haven't signed up up to that already, you can do so from within the heart space. I have In Conversation With, where I have invited the delightful fabulous Sarita Deste to come and speak to me on the theme of enchantment and illusion which we are working with with the goddess Ran and keep your eyes out for the newsletter I am in the process of finalizing the um, retreat that is coming up um, beneath the veils which is going to be harnessing the Beltane energy to support us in really embracing the hidden recognizing and working with the mask stepping into that place of wisdom where we connect with our past lives where we connect with our ancestral wisdom during this time where we are being called into um, sovereignty and the end of the rune where we're starting to open itself up to us for those of you who follow the cycle of the runes we're in this place of maturity when we can synthesize all of these different pieces of um, of information. So look out for that retreat. Um, lovely to see just popping in at the end there. Carol, hi Carol, good evening from a wet um, WA. I'm going, you're gonna have to tell me where that is. And it is raining, I have North is tonight. North is, so I'm feeling a bit of Gary and Frecky energy there for you there, Carol, with your North is rune. So have a little listen to um, Middle Earth readings today and see what you take away thinking about this as the rune of the balance in between necessity and desire. Lisa says, Suello is my Nornis gift. Lovely rune to have as your Nornis gift. And as I was speaking and you were just saying that it's wet where you are, Carol, it's absolutely pouring it down with rain. So I'm going to go and feel into what I need and I'm hoping it's not um, a walk quite yet today love and blessings to you all see you all very soon enjoy the rest of your bank holiday monday western australia says suzanne thank you western australia um see better memory than me we have such a so many people who tune in from all over the world i'm incredibly grateful to those of you who come at um, times which are you know, strange times for you so much appreciated blessings to all of you see you very soon